inside your computer is some memory and this is used to store all of the data that is needed while your computer is running. Now it's helpful to think of our computer memory um, which might be our primary storage or our RAM as um, a collection of memory cells. So here we have a box, this represents our memory, and we can break that box into individual uh, segments called cells. And each of those cells will be of the same size, which we call the cell size. And that might be maybe one byte or two bytes. So if it's one byte, that means eight bits of data could be stored inside each memory cell. Now, one byte of data is not very much, um, but your computer's memory will store many, many of these cells, one after the other, in what we call this contiguous arrangement. So they run one after the other. So how does the computer, or more precisely, the CPU, know where to get data from? Well, this is done by giving every single memory cell its own address, starting at zero, and then going up one, two, three, four, all the way until the last number is just however many memory cells we have, minus one because we started at zero. So let's imagine S here is the size of memory, so the last memory address is going to be S minus one. So if I wanted to store some data in memory, I could tell the CPU the address where I want to store the data and the value that needs to be stored. So for example, I could say write into memory cell four the value 01100110. So far, so simple. The problem comes when we consider just how many memory addresses there are. In a 32-bit system, which is quite old now, most computers are 64-bit, but in a 32-bit system, there are two to the power of 32 memory addresses or memory locations. That number might look small, but actually it is 4,294,967,296 addresses. That is a huge number of memory addresses to keep track of. And if we had to write our programs using the memory address of every location in memory where we wanted to store something, our programs would be very, very difficult to read. There'd be things like, get the value from cell 31,732 and store it in cell 4,601,794 it would be very, very difficult to read and understand and even write that program. And of course, if we had fixed memory locations for every single piece of data, well, what happens if another program is written to that place? Or you run it on a different computer with a different amount of memory locations available. So really, this isn't going to work with big, complicated programs, the sort of programs that you might be writing to run on a PC or a Mac or a phone. Which leaves us to have to ask the question, how can we store values in memory in an easier way that doesn't involve having to know exactly where they are in the billions upon billions, if it's a 64-bit system, of memory addresses that could be storing those values? And so that is the question we're going to try and answer in this lesson.